So Marianne Williamson was interviewed by Brianna Joy Gray, and she had some interesting comments to say about Norman Finkelstein and to Revolutionary Blackout Network. That's right. Finally, after so many months, she is responding to that interview uh, that she did with RBN way back in 2023. Now, before that interview, even I was hesitant of Marianne Williamson's campaign. And to be clear here, uh, that interview cemented, cemented my belief that, oh boy, okay, Marianne is just another corporate neoliberal Democrat. And that's not the first time she's snapped at people or refused to take any kind of constructive criticism. So we've talked about this, and I know RBN is going to be talking about this. And I have to say, her overall response and, I guess, demeanor towards not only Brianna Joy Gray, but also reliving and reflecting on her criticism, or the criticism towards her, really says all you need to know about Marianne and her lackluster, mediocre campaign. After all, she dropped out and then jumped right back in. Marianne, it's either crap or get off the pot, you know? Have a choice. So let's go ahead and bring this up here. Obviously, this is a terrible time to pause it because she looks like she's staring into our soul. Brianna, don't don't look into her eyes. I feel like I'd be remiss not to pick up on one of the points you made there, which was feeling misrepresented by progressive, um, some progressive commentators. Um, could you would, would you would you mind kind of putting a finer point on what you think the nature of that mischaracterization was? How do you how do you feel like you were lied about or misrepresented? Well, let's let's say our your friend Norm Finkelstein. I would be willing to bet a hundred dollars. He's never read my books. Ugh. Well, your your campaign is nothing more than a glorified book tour. But hold on, folks. It, it it gets better because she says that her campaign was infiltrated by somebody, and then she goes on to say that Norman doesn't know what he's talking about. And the way she describes RBN, all all I know is this because I don't want to speak for CJ or Nick or the entire crew at Revolution Blackout Network. But I do know this, and I can say this with absolute confidence. They're going to be raking her over the coals, and it's and it's going to be magnifique. Mag- it's it's going to be beautiful. I, I I so CJ and Nick and the off chance you're listening to this, I I am actually looking forward. I'm actually making myself a nice little brunch after the show, and I'm I I'm looking forward when RBN goes live today. I I, I I'm just just throwing it out there. Because cause it'll be pure gold. Hold on, folks. It's going to get a little crazy. He knows nothing about my career. He knows nothing about my life. He what knows is the claim, the claim that he's he made that you feel? Well, and he knows nothing about the, the, the you know, I, I doubt that he's looked at the issues on Marianne 2024 and how hard I and others work to develop them. And yet the, the sneers... The use of his own platform on your shows and others. Marianne Williamson is an airhead. <laughs> and I don't see why anyone should take take into account anything she has to say about anything. Okay, she's good at self-help. Fine. If I needed self-help, I would go to Marianne Williamson. Well, I haven't a clue why she's commenting on these subjects. She has no idea what she's talking about. I really wish Marianne Williamson, I'm sorry, I'm getting sick of this. I wish she would just shut up. Norm, Norm, take it easy, man. You're debating all these people. Your blood pressure's going to go up. Your head's going to pop, all right? We love you, buddy, but take it easy. <laughs> Savvy, call him, call him down, Savvy. Because she hasn't a clue what she's talking about. So she should just, just, I'm sorry for raising my voice. I'm not supposed to do that, but I'm tired. I just wish she would shut up. Because she hasn't a clue what she's talking about. And she speaks with such authority, like she's a graduate of a, a, a women's fin- a girl's finishing school. She speaks with such authority. Authority about what? Ms. Williamson, have you read a single book in the subject? Have you read a single human, ri- human rights report in the subject? Have you read a single economics report in the subject? Then what are you talking about? These these voices don't matter. That's why you call somebody an influencer. Look, I'm not everybody's 
somebody somebody might disagree with me. And so, of course, criticism, especially if you're running for president. But when someone's criticizing you, demeaning you, shaming you for being someone that you're not. That's well, not... I think that's yeah, I Mary, mean, I think it, I think it might be constructive for you to have an opportunity to push back directly against any particular criticism that you think doesn't represent you, because I, I think it might be useful to disentangle what is an actual disagreement right? A substantive political disagreement okay. from what you feel like have been misrepresentations, unfair charges about what you actually believe. And who I am, who I am and what I've done. Okay. And, and I, I've, I, I've seen who you are and look, I, I saw how you went after uh, candidate Dixon, for example, when he was criticizing uh, your campaign and also uh, when he was bringing up repar uh, reparations and how you snapped at him, how you snapped at him and yelled at him. And there have been reports and accusations of you yelling at your staff members and being very disrespectful. I know do dissidents did a segment on that. And I know that RBN is definitely going to be talking. I, I, I would be surprised if RBN doesn't say anything. I will be surprised and shocked, shocked. Cause don't worry, folks, the good stuff is coming up. With my life. That's the thing. I think sometimes I'm a boomer. And oh I came like God. one of the things I heard him say to you on one of your shows, <laughs> she doesn't come from a movement. Excuse me, not from his movement. There are other ways to enter a room and to have beliefs. And anyway, so yeah, there's been this, this image of me as uh, intellectual lightweight from somebody, like I said, who hasn't read my books. There's a term um, and hasn't come up to hear me speak. There's a term, uh, uh, what is it? Um, contempt prior to investigation. So, you know, I think I, I think maybe I'm I'm wrong, but I think when people actually come and hear me, they might leave yes. thinking I don't agree with those politics. But I don't think anybody comes and hears me, and thinks that I'm that person. You know what it is? Is this doppelganger that gets created about you? And like even anti-vax, I never made an anti-vax statement. I made a statement about mandates before COVID, by the way, on the issue of civil liberties and, and mandates. So then it becomes, you know, so anyway. Okay. Let's see. Boy, she really looks tired. Lady, lady, take it easy from that box of wine. Well, that, that frankly, as I think the kind of position that is, you know, a significant factor in RFK Jr.'s popularity. Yeah. And I do, I was just talking to someone, uh, you know, a, a friend in the Bernie campaign about this last night, about what Trump taught us about the value of sticking by unpopular opinions. I know that's a, a little bit of a weird way to put it, but that when you believe something and there's public backlash for it, Trump refuses to apologize and it doubles down and it creates this kind of invincibility about him. I think my and I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, my campaign. She, 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 she's bare, she, she's being restrained here, but it's passive aggressive. Now, wait, hold on. If, if you're sitting down, try not to fall out of your chair because watch how she describes her lackluster, mediocre campaign. Hey, Kyle and Crystal, this was your next Bernie Sanders. Let's, let's, let's see what she says about her campaign and how it captured the hearts of, Billions of millions of invisible people. I think I've made it clear. I stick with an opinion whether you agree with me or not. It just happens to be on, on vaccines that I'm not anti-vax. And I had so many experiences on this campaign of saying to someone, well, actually, that's not what I believe. And somebody says, yes, it is what you believe. And oh, I'm like, boy. She, notice she, she almost used her real voice. But wait a minute. I think I would know what I believe. And then they say, I read on the internet that you believe. So where do you go with that? So, no, I agree with you on that. And I think it is part of the popularity of, of Trump. I read on the internet. I don't think you had a conversation with that. No, I don't think you had a conversation like that at all. And I, I like to think that I'm that person. Listen, I'm, I'm obviously not running to try to, I mean, I'm running to put forth the opinions that I have. I mean, I'm open if somebody points out that I'm wrong about something and my, I change my mind, but 
that's the thing to be to be dismissed for who you actually are i understand and she's trying to make herself sound like a political victim your campaign was dead in the water now you in theory she could have done some things but remember remember she wasn't all that interested in getting on the ballot and then you dropped out of the race and then you're going to re-enter the race as a candidate again how is that going to happen when now biden has clinched the nomination now at this point you you've wasted so many people's time are you actually even going to show up at the dnc convention cuz she shows up well, first of all, I'll, I'll be sure to wear some charms of protection because I think she might hex me. But in so many ways, I was dismissed for being who I'm actually not. But by the way, not a poor me. I'm a, I mean, I'm a big girl and all. And, and, and I think the systemic blocks to my candidacy were much bigger than that. They had to do with the DNC saying there would not be a primary, uh, the way CNN blacklisted MSNBC. So, you know, it it was all those things. It was. It was, uh, and and listen, my own failures. It was people lying about me, though. People saying something about my personality with whom I'd never had a cross word. Somebody saying, uh, just outrageous. But the fact that people believe things. And I want to say something because this is important to me. In every situation where I might complain, I'm very aware. If I had been better at this. If I had been better at that, if I had been wiser about this or that, then I could have overridden it. So I take 100 percent responsibility for my own experience. We even had somebody who had infiltrated the campaign. I'm so glad that we got to that point. Infiltrated your campaign. Now, who could that have been? I don't want to name any names. I, 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 I could theorize. I could speculate. I don't know. Wasn't there somebody, somebody who was in a campaign and dropped out? And they went to another campaign and dropped out. Yeah, whatever. Probably not. But who? A bird goes tweet and owl goes who? Because you just made a series. You you dropped a big old atomic bomb there. What? Someone infiltrated your campaign? How'd that happen? Who? I was afraid I couldn't get rid of that person because I thought the press would go nuts. I should have just done it. When you when you say infiltrated you know, from and, and and who infiltrated? Who did it? A bird goes tweet and an owl goes who? There from are where? Can you Well, I'm not going to go into it, but I will tell you this, there are When you say something like that, no, you got to go into it. You have to talk about it. Because if that's the reason why your campaign sucked or things weren't working out properly, that is something we should know about because we do know even though Bernie Sanders was a willing cuck and he let it happen, that Bernie Sanders campaign was also having some Democratic operatives in there. We saw it firsthand. Everybody talked about it. There are there are numerous people in independent media that did breaking stories talking about how the Bernie Sanders campaign was compromised. A lot of people were talking about it. Now, Marianne, you're going to drop that atomic bomb. Hold up. <laughs> Back it up a second. Don't want to mansplain. But when you when you when you say something like that, you have to elaborate more, please. Political hitmen. There are political operatives who infiltrate campaigns like mine. You know, when you run for president, the FBI calls you, and the FBI says, "If the FBI called me, I'd be like, hey, Bob, hey, Bill, run for president. Good luck, Kit. <laughs> those those are my handlers." <laughs> They're they're pretty cool guys. <laughs> they're spying. Hey, what's the name of your FBI handler? The the FBI called her. Okay. Uh, please come in. We'd like to give you a briefing, and it's the exact same briefing that we're going to give every other candidate who's running. And you know, it's not too long. It's maybe twenty minutes, and they tell you all these things to be on the lookout for. And then they say that they are very common, and they say the main actors are Russia, China, and Iran. And I actually looked at the gentleman and I said, wait, Russia, China, Iran. I, okay, great. So the FBI is dropping all these details on her. Okay. I'm aware of all those things and they didn't come from outside. So, so, okay, wait, it came from the inside. Then who, who did it? 
because I don't see any progress. Because I remember when when your campaign first launched off, a lot of people in independent media, since we were burnt not once but twice by the Bernie Sanders movement, we didn't we were no longer feeling the burn anymore. No pun intended. Um, I don't see anyone in the progressive movement associated. I, I mean, are you putting blame on progressives? Who are you putting a blame on? Because there's only one group that I could see that would infiltrate from the inside your campaign. No, not Republicans. Republicans had their own problems. I'm just saying, Marianne, when you when you make an accusation like that, who did it? It's 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 the fact that we have campaign suppression. Now we're talking about the system itself. You know, if you're if you have an elite, a political media industrial complex, as I call it, that feels it has the right to curate the candidate, to say who and who you should not feel is qualified, that's candidate suppression. And to me, candidate suppression is a form of uh, voter suppression. So I, I want to ask you a little bit about that um, and some new reporting about the Democratic Party's um, legal efforts, renewed legal efforts to undermine any third parties who they perceive to be potential spoilers in the general election. But be before we get there, I, I do want to come back to this um, idea of un unfair left criticism. When we first when you first raised the prospect, I, I thought you were might be alluding to um, the interview that you had done with um, Revolutionary Blackout Network as opposed to Norm. Now, this 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 is pure gold because I remember when this happened and, and Marianne Williamson, she, she she uses the she uses the white person being called out excuses. Oh, I have plenty of Palestinian friends. We, we've all heard that joke. Oh, I uh, mo, mo, some of my best friends are black. Some of my best friends are X, Y and Z. This clip is absolutely really great. And, and it's, it's just. You could tell that Marianne is completely delusional, and uh, I, I really have to criticize and call out all the networks that were hyping her up as the next big thing. Since then, what has Marianne Williamson accomplished? Next to nothing. Even uncommitted earned more votes than she did. Marianne is not inspirational. As a candidate, she not only has she failed not once but twice, but now she's doing the blame game on those who have given her real constructive criticism, and she has not learned from it, like most of these Democratic affiliates. Finkel's team and, you know, kind of the backlash out of that, especially because of how central Israel and Gaza has become after October 7th. And you mentioned that you stand firmly by your opinions, but also when new factors come into play or persuasive arguments are made, you're open to change. And I wonder whether or not you see, one, the RBN interview as um, misrepresenting your opinions and what or I, whether or not. Oh, OK. Uh, uh, come on, Marianne. She's going to pretend to be like, what did I say? You're telling me you forgot. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't drink or smoke too much to forget because I didn't forget. That that interview is pure gold, and I, I remember texting uh, uh, CJ saying like, "Hey, post that link to that interview again on social media. Pe people need to see that. That is that is pure gold." There. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know that that informed me what I said. First of all, Norm Finkelstein was starting after me long before October seventh. But what was it that I said on RBN? What was it that you said? <laughs> I know even in private you referred to that as a big faux pas on my part. What did I say on that show? And then I could respond to it. This is one area, to be honest, where I think Obama did make an effort. And um, he's unpopular with a lot of people there for that reason, to be honest. But <laughs> I think. Hey, hey, Brianna, you're, 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 you're kind of wrong for bringing up this clip because people are bringing up all the clown stuff. Folks, listen, hold on. It's one thing to listen to Marianne. But as you all know, occasionally, you know, occasionally on Hard Lens Media, I, I post the links, you know, people uh, giving their comments here and there. Just 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 pay close attention to the audience. This is why I love the audience. The audience is beautiful. The audience is great. The audience is life and love. So let's go ahead and enjoy this. And um, he's unpopular with a lot of people there for that reason, to be honest. But <laughs> I think he did make an effort to... Uh, <laughs> Uh, to bring the Palestinian issue onto the table in a way that it had not been before within the 
uh, major political dialogue in America. And Mary, I Marianne Williamson is a Zionist. Shout out to CJ! <laughs> And this is where we see that awful, awful man, Nick, start mansplaining. Nick, you horrible man. You horrible man for mansplaining. I certainly seek to do that. I also think, if I might say, because I'm a Jewish woman, I think that I would have actually some moral authority in doing that. I should not, my support for Israel should not be at the expense of my Jewish values. And as an American, my support for Israel should not be at the expense of my democratic values. Right now, it's becoming that way. And that's a problem. Mary, Mary and I pre appreciate for, uh, the answer, but the, I talked to the Palestinian Community Network, got a lot of Palestinian allies. They will not find that to be an acceptable answer. It's one well, I, no. uh, they, well they, I don't they know. They only have one state where everyone has equal rights under the law. The, the, the Israel Zionists are not to be trusted to implement a two state solution. Has that been shown many and many times? So I hope you have conversations with some of you Palestinians. That, that's By the way, hey, how do we know that just a few months later, not only would the Zionists start uh, coming after everybody, but also start demanding more censorship and, of course, committing the most horrific crimes we have seen in human history so far. Hey, man's inhumanity to man. Say it with me, folks. Here's what, what could possibly go wrong. And here's Mary Ann Williamson, where she put where she claps back with saying some of my best friends are Palestinians. So hard. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Wait. No, uh, no. Let me speak. I just want to also want you. Uh, you can respond to that as well, but because I know you have limited time, because also okay, ask, uh, I would like a chance to respond. Yeah, go ahead, and I want to ask you about Ukraine war. But go ahead. yeah, what I would would say to you is when you say you have a lot of Palestinian friends, uh, let let how many Palestinian friends you have? I have a lot of Palestinian friends. <laughs> you say you've talked to Palestinians. I have talked to Palestinians. So <laughs> I don't think we have a contest here. If you're telling me you know Palestinians, and uh, I hey hey. She should also say some of her best friends are black people. She say some of her best friends are Latinos. Some of her, some of her best friends, some of her best friends are X, Y, and Z of this group or that group. She knows lots of Palestinians. She's got bind. Hey, Mitt Romney, step aside. You might have binders of women. She's got binders of Palestinians. So there we go. That's what she has. That's what she has. You know, I mean, she 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 almost seemed to be in 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 in, in like a, like I know more people than you do kind of conversation. Will not find that to be an acceptable answer. It's one well, I know. Uh, they, well, I don't they know. have one state where everyone has equal rights under the law. The, the the Israel Zionists are not to be trusted to implement a two state solution. Has that been shown many and many times? So I hope you have conversations with some of you Palestinians. That that's a hard. <laughs> well, that's wait a, a minute. Wait. No, uh, no. And, let and me and speak. I just want to also want. You uh, you can respond to that as well, but because I know you have limited time, because also okay, uh, I would like a chance to respond. Yeah, go ahead, and I want to ask you about Ukraine war. But go ahead. Yeah, what I would would say to you is when you say you have a lot of Palestinian friends, uh, let let how many Palestinian friends you have? I have a lot of Palestinian friends. You say you've talked to Palestinians. I have talked to Palestinians, so I don't point. think we have a contest here. If you're telling me you know Palestinians and I don't, so that doesn't work for me. That's a fair okay? point. But I'm you so not the point is, right a, now. On the Palestine. See, if you're not gonna let me talk, honey, there's no point in this. If you're not wow. Ah, oh, I forgot how condescending she was in that interview. If you're not gonna let me talk, honey, if you're not gonna let me talk, honey, then I'm not gonna have anything to do with you. Let me talk. If you're not gonna let me talk to the things you say, then there really is no point. We are having the conversation. Uh, these are no, we're not. No, we're not. You're doing a lot yes! of planning here, and you're telling me Dude. what is. You're not Nick. Hey guys, let's have democracy in the chat. Type one for Kit, you awful man. Nick was mansplaining. And and you're siding with Nick, you awful man. You mansplaining. Mansplaining. Horrible. I type two, my goodness. I forgot how condescending uh Marianne Williamson was. Who are you gonna side? Who are you I, I, I mean seriously? It is what it is, but come on. This this this, this is pure gold, because here we go. You're asking me and then not giving me a chance to respond. So uh, there's no reason for me to be in that. Well, I already said, oh, and now more men are going to be laughing at more me. Men. So, no, more men. More men. Yes. Off the top of my head. Right God, now. I loved it when Rome got up and he just did that whole dance, you know? Did, did, did the whole spin around. Hold on. A chance to respond, so uh, there's no reason for me to be in that. Well, I already said, Oh, and now more men are gonna be laughing at me, so no, this is not <laughs> all the time. I really can't wait for RBN later today, it's gonna be great.
it's going to be great. If they, if, they, if they don't talk about this, I'll be shocked. But they should. I don't want to tell people what to do on their show, but that's pure freaking gold right there. You know what? I'm sorry. One more time. Artist, oh, and now more men are going to be laughing at me. So, no, this is not working for me. Off the top of my head, my, my recollection was that they um, broadly, after the fact, charged you with being a Zionist. Um, it, it does, you know, people have whatever they think about what that definition is, but definitionally a commitment to the uh, there being a Jewish state um, that is Israel. Um, and it does not seem as though that's incorrect. Would you say? Well, the bit about Zionist, I never said the word the word Zionism has been so changed over the years. The original concept, like as I was brought up, was the idea that. OK, it, so hold on. Here's her neoliberal version. Her Hollywood version of what Zionism is, even though right now we are witnessing the actions of a horrific apartheid government actively targeting men, women and children. We are witnessing military actions taking place all over Gaza. We are witnessing a port that's being built out of the rubble of homes. There, there are probably human bodies in that rubble that are probably being discovered and being dug out. We are witnessing the occupation. We are witnessing man's inhumanity to man, as I've said before. But this is Marianne Williamson's alternate take of what Zionism should be. I hope you're sitting down for this. Israel had the right to exist, not that no one else did. So I stay away from that word now because of what it means to so many people. So I did not say on that on that show or anywhere else those words. My commitment to the belief that Israel has a right to exist is no more and no less than my commitment to the fact that the Palestinians also have the right to a Palestinian state. I believe the United States and I personally feel an equally robust commitment to the peace, the, the security, and the sovereignty of both peoples. And I, 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 as a candidate, stand for that. And personally, in my heart, I believe that both peoples have the right to a state. I think what tips it... Netanyahu said very clear, he doesn't want a two-state solution. Okay, that's not going to happen. And this shows how ignorant Marianne Williamson is when it comes down to criticism of Israel and the apartheid government. It over into, I think, uh, what would be correctly described as Zionism is believing that it's not just the right to a state, but the right to a Jewish state, which, of course, can only be maintained by precluding immigration by Palestinians into Israel. That would change the demographic character of Israel. And that's why there's so much conflict and tension over whether or not the 700,000 odd Palestinians that were um, expelled during the Nakba have a right of return, whether or not, you know, the, the, the quote unquote need for there to be a wall around Gaza in the first place to limit the egress and, and ingress of Palestinians into greater Israel, the diff the kind of apartheid, what's been described as an apartheid system of different checkpoints and roads that Palestinians versus Israelis can go down to and go go along rather. And the fact that there has been a blocking of a Palestinian state by Western American veto for decades and decades and decades now, uh, despite statehood being one of the fundamental rights that the UN believes every person on the earth uh, has, has a right to have. I mean, so correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, but it, it does. You are. <clears throat> But oh, she says, you are. You are wrong. You are wrong. Let's here's here. She goes again. And this will be the last part of it, because there's only so much I could stomach Marianne looking at me. I think she's trying to consume my soul. 20 20 percent of the Israeli population is there are Palestinian. Listen, we had segregation in the United States. It was wrong and it needed to be dismantled to whatever extent there are unjust, undemocratic laws towards anyone in Israel. And they are not across the board, as is pictured by some. That needs to be changed. But to me, that does not necessitate uh, the destruction of the state of Israel. But do you as see what I'm saying? Okay. And, and, and for her, it always goes back to destruction, destruction, destruction of Israel. It's the world's most one-sided fistfight there, Marianne. I don't mean to mansplain, but you need to hear me out and let me explain this to you with my own words. All right? 
Right now, the actions that's taking place in Gaza is absolutely horrific. It's barbaric. Men, women, and children are being targeted. And when Norman Fiegelstein and RBN called her out, and rightfully so, it is clear not only was this interview, which was a lot to sit through, uh, that we only went halfway through it, folks. She doesn't know what she's talking about, which explains why her campaign, even if there was somebody on the inside who infiltrated in theory, what more could they do that Marianne Williamson was already doing? She was self-sabotaging herself in the very beginning. Not only did she dismiss the independent media networks, not only has she been cold and indifferent to progressives, not only is, did she tie herself to the Democratic Party, but she is quite clear in her own statements here and in previous interviews that she doesn't know what she's talking about when it comes down to Israel and Palestine. The Palestinian people, I, I wonder if, if Marianne Williamson, after that interview that she did with RBN, if she's still talking to a lot of her Palestinian friends, right? Because she said she has a lot of Palestinian friends. Are they talking to her? Is she listening? Is she picking up the phone or is she ghosting them? Because from what we have covered and what a lot of people in independent media have covered, especially from the primaries in Michigan and Minnesota and a few others, there's a lot of people writing in uncommitted or Gaza in there because people are disillusioned with the Democratic Party. And that's a party that Marianne Williamson chose to run in. That is a political institution that Marianne Williamson has associated herself with. And then she drops out and comes right back in. The eagle, the pride, the insanity of this person. To even think that, what, we should take her serious? She is not a serious person. Her campaign was never serious from the beginning. And for all those who were hyping her up as this great candidate, somebody we should listen to, follow, respect. What's it like having that egg on your face? What's it like knowing that perhaps instead of wasting people's time covering a Democratic primary that was already a foregone conclusion, Biden was going to get the nomination. We should have been focusing on citizen ballot initiatives, ranked choice voting, supporting third parties and independents. I don't know. That seems a little bit more constructive than listening to somebody who doesn't really understand the big picture. The big picture. The true picture of why, why we cannot be near the Democrats. The Democrats, no matter who they have in the primary, they all have their marching orders. They are all tools. And this is clown behavior from a clown candidate. I, for one, have to say I am glad that many people are waking up to the fact that the people that we respected in 2020, because I think it was the last time ever anyone really took the Democratic Party or anyone running in it seriously enough. Look at the voter turnout. Look at the lack of enthusiasm. Look at the lack of enthusiasm for Marianne. Who's supporting her? Probably only mo her most diehard sickle fans. And if she can't take constructive criticism, then she has no business running for the highest office of the land. And that's not me mansplaining. That's me spitting facts. I will say this, though. I am curious to see what RBN is about to do. Because while some people might say, Kit, you're being mean to her. You're raking over the coals for no reason. This will be tame compared to RBN's fire. All right. Because they have every right to call her out. The way she dismissed them, the way she was ignorant towards them, and the way she was constantly dismissing their concerns, which have turned out not only to be correct, but extremely relevant, especially now in these horrific times.